going to have Brendan from the Ontario Coalition Against Poverty speak about the history of May Day. <laughs> so a lot of these people don't know what the history of May Day is. They just think it's another day, it's the, it's the first of May, maybe it's like a pagan holiday. But that's not true. In, on May 1st, in 1886, an organization of American trade unionists called for a demonstration for the eight-hour day. This is when 12-hour days were on a regular basis. Uh, bodies like the Toronto District Labor Council were calling for a 10-hour day. Like, when we talk about an eight-hour day, this is where it comes from. It comes from the demonstrations on May 1st. Um, over 10,000 people marched in New York City, about 10,000 people marched in Detroit and Milwaukee. This is when the populations of these cities were a lot smaller. 30,000 workers marched in Chicago that day. Two days later, there was a strike going on since February. It was at the McCormick Harvesting Machinery Company in Chicago. Uh, they had been locked up since February, scabs had been brought in, and they had been constantly attacked by the Pinkertons. That night, on the 3rd, uh, police opened fire on the workers who were trying to stop the scabs from going into the plant, and they killed two workers. And then the next day, the trade union in Chicago called for a demonstration, not just for the demonstration against those two workers that were shot dead, but also again for the eight-hour day. And this was a peaceful demonstration that lasted six hours. At the end of it, someone threw a bomb, and no one knows what happened or who threw the bomb. The Chicago Tribune said there was 50 dead workers lying in the streets of Chicago the next day. They arrested uh, eight anarchists for this. You know the anarchists that everyone sees on like Globe and Mail in like the black masks who are like smashing windows? These are trade union organizers. I myself am an anarchist and I've been organizing trade unions since I was 17 years old. This is a part of like what's always been part of the workers' movement. Not a single piece of evidence was ever like shown in court. The judge said that they did not need evidence. All of them were, all eight of them were found guilty. The next governor pardoned three of them that were still alive. One of them killed himself on the eve of the execution, and four other were hung by the state of Illinois. These people are like fairly famous people in American history. One of them was Albert Parsons. That a lot of people will recognize that last name. He was Lucy Parsons, the feminist trade organizer from the early part of the century. That was her husband, and Albert Spies is another one of them. So, a couple years later, in 1889, they continuously had marches for the eight hour day across America and spread it across the world. Canada and America and Australia are the only places they don't celebrate celebration for the eight hour day. And just as these workers were looking forward 126 years ago and saying, we want eight hours to like work. Eight hours to rest and eight hours to spend with our loved ones, with our, and our hobbies, and what we do, what we want. We have to also look at like what we're doing in the, right now and in the future, and be equally as inspiring and equally as forethought as the eight-hour day. Most people here realize they don't work eight hours a day. They work, they have forced overtime. They have to like go to work. They often have to like have breaks that are unpaid for. They're working nine, ten hours a day if you can find a job and you're not working zero. So. Like, today we're talking about a living wage. A living wage is a base amount of money that an employer has to pay to all people. This isn't really like some kind of pie-in-the-sky dream. Just like eight hours, 126 years ago, was not a pie-in-the-sky dream. It's what we should be fighting for. LAX has a living wage ordinance, which means every single person who works at an airport has to get paid a minimum, a minimum amount. I think it's 14 or 15 Americans, but I can't remember. This is not something that should be unreachable for us. And you know what? And if people start thinking it's unreachable, that's a problem. Just like how trade unionists who started May Day talked about an eight-hour day. We need to talk about more than they're offering us. We have to have like thoughts and like uh, ideas that go beyond just like a little narrow collective agreement. Because if we don't, young generation of workers, people younger than myself, are never going to support us. We have to think ahead. We have to like have ideas that actually challenge the way we work. Eight hours a day was an amazing challenge, and like we all hold this as something that is like sacred, is natural, that happens everywhere. But that's not true. Workers fought for that. And we're gonna have to fight for the gains to keep this eight-hour day, and we're gonna have to fight for new ones, like the living wage. That's all I got. <laughs>